Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to take a look at running a hypothesis test for a population proportion using a p-value approach. So let's quickly review what our p-value approach looks like and tells us. So we'll run the test based on a set of hypothesis statements and we will get a probability or p-value. That p-value will tell us the probability of having a sample like we had given that the null hypothesis is true. So if that p-value is greater than or equal to alpha, if we have a relatively large probability compared to our significance level, then that means this seems not too odd. So we're going to fail to reject that null hypothesis. But if we get a p-value that is less than our significance level, if the probability of having a sample like the one we got is very small, then that means it's very unlikely that the null hypothesis is true, so we will reject. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have here. So in a random sample of 300 patients, 21 experienced nausea. A drug manufacturer claims that fewer than 10% of patients who take its new drug for treating Alzheimer's disease will experience nausea. Test their claim at a significance level of 0.01. So we start every hypothesis test with a pair of hypothesis statements. Here we're going to test the claim that the true proportion is equal to 10% or 0 0.10. And the claim here really is that they want to say that it will be less than 0 0.10, since they are saying that fewer than 10% will experience nausea. So we are running what we call a one proportion Z test. So that can be found under the stat menu, toggled over to the test window, and then we'll find that one proportion Z test. So this is a little bit different than a Z test. A Z test is for means, and this is a Z test that is specifically geared for when we're working with a proportion. So toggling over to that, we see that we need to give certain values. We need to give our P sub zero, that is our value that we have placed in our null hypothesis, or 0 0.1. We need to give our x value, or our number of successes. In this case, it was 21 that experienced nausea. We need to give our n, or the number in our sample. In this case, that was 300 patients. And then we need to tell the calculator, are we running a one-sided or two-sided test? So we're going to look at our alternative hypothesis. Since we are running p less than a value, we're going to grab the less than here and toggle down to calculate and hit enter. When we do that, we're going to be given a test statistic. So again, you could use this to help you calculate your z star if you were using the rejection region method. We're going to be given a p value. That's the one we need. And then notice we're given our p hat and our n. So it's important here that we not confuse p with this p for proportion and then p hat. There's just a lot of p's. This p right here is actually our p value. So this p is our probability. All right, so now that we have our p value equal to 0.0416 and so on, we want to compare that to our alpha. The alpha we were told to use is 0.01. So in this case, alpha of 0.01, that is the smaller value, so our p value is greater at 0.04. When our p-value is greater, that means we do not have enough evidence to reject. So we are going to fail to reject. So we can say here, there is not enough evidence to reject 
the hypothesis. that 10% of patients will experience nausea. So here, there's not enough evidence to reject that the true proportion of patients experiencing nausea is around 10%. So we can't really substantiate the drug companies claim that fewer than 10% will experience nausea taking their medication. All right, guys, that does it for this video on hypothesis testing for population proportion using the p-value method. Until next time, we'll catch you in a future video.